Hey Weather Warriors, in this video we're talking about the increasing odds of Arctic blasts to come into the United States from a vault of cold air up here in Canada as we head towards mid-February. I'm going to talk about the timing, how bad it could get, and who is going to get this because not everyone is going to get this Arctic blast as we head towards mid-February. Now, before we begin, if you like detailed, cutting-edge, exciting weather forecast breakdowns like this, much more detailed than you would see on TV, click the subscribe button below and introduce yourself if you're new. Also, comment below how cold has it gotten for you this winter because that could change here in the next couple of weeks. Now, what we're looking at here is a map and temperature anomalies for this winter. And it's been warmer than average across basically the entire United States, except maybe parts of the north central United States. And it's been much above average for the west coast of the United States. If you remember my winter forecast, I said the coldest air would line up right around this region right here with the X being right there. So while it hasn't verified yet, that could be changing here. Uh, very shortly. Now, I said the west would be much warmer than average. That's verified. The only place where it could be improved would be the east half of the United States, where it has been much warmer than average in that region with some southeast ridging. Now, let's get to the uh, extended outlook here. This is the 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook. This is by the National Weather Service. I'll show you mine in a second here. But you can see they have much uh, a very high chance of above average temperatures. This is from February 12th through February 16th and much above average temperatures here in the southeastern United States. Meanwhile, we go to the northwest half or two thirds of the United States and much below average, a 90 percent chance of a below average temperature swath here in particularly Wyoming, but the, really the most likely area is going to include all of the northern plains and really the entire western half of the United States. So as we go towards, uh, well, we'll look at the precipitation here first, and obviously you can see much above average precipitation here across the eastern three, four, five, six or so of the country, especially the southern plains here, where several storm systems are going to be tracking across the United States. Obviously, if you looked at my video a couple weeks ago, I said there'd be a big pattern change, and that's exactly what is happening as we have a big uptick in storm activity not necessarily all snow but definitely precipitation and uh, some uh, temperature swings as well as we head towards the 14th through the 20th of uh, february the the cpc has a below average temperature still really in the same area but it does extend just a little bit out to the northeastern united states towards maine southeast is still warm and the western two-thirds three-fourths of the country is below average with a bullseye still over Wyoming with high probabilities of below average temperatures. Now, do I agree with them? I'll show you in a second. Precipitation looks pretty much similar, except the southwestern United States should begin to dry up between the 14th and 20th, and we'll go over why that is going to be the case here in a second. Uh, and so that pattern looks to hold out there, still pretty dry. We'll show you that in a second. Above average precipitation out for the rest of the United States, especially towards the Tennessee Valley. Now, this is a hun uh, this is going to be for the uh, 13th of February, and this is kind of when I think things are going to change between the 10th and the 13th. Obviously, they've already changed with the storm tracks, but the temperatures that's going to be a big difference. Now we got some ridging here in the northwestern side of the United States into Canada, and it's really digging into Canada. Meanwhile, there's some uh, lower height anomalies. So these are kind of your temperatures, height anomalies in the atmosphere. What this is going to do is it's going to kind of nudge some cold air and that cold air is locked in Canada like a vault and it's going to come down into the United States kind of like a jackpot falling out. And really how far south will it get? Well, we're going to have some ridging out here. So I don't think this is going to get terribly far south, but for sure in the northwestern and north central part in the northeastern part of the United States where you see these lines go from northwest to southeast near and behind these little uh, cold maxes right here. That's where your best Arctic air usually lies, and it's going to be coming streaming south into the north central United States. And if you look at the computer models here, this is for the 13th of February. We're going to look at a couple of days, but uh, it doesn't change much in between the days we look at. Keep that in mind. You can see these are temperature anomalies. This is just off the ground, 1850 millibars, and that's just off the deck. Okay, it's not going to vary too much from the surface to just off the deck. So we'll just use this. This is the GEFS ensemble. So we take several different model runs of the GFS and blend them together. This is much more accurate in the long range. And you can see temperatures 
Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Nebraska, you're talking 10 to 25 degrees below average in that region. So very, very cold temperatures. Meanwhile, the southwestern United States and the southeastern, northeastern United States, 5 to 10 degrees above average in those regions. Uh, the European computer model, the high res, is showing an interesting picture. It's very similar, but it's a little bit farther to the west with everything. You can see that the 5 to 20 degree above average swath includes the entire eastern half of the United States, except for Maine, where it's below average up there, in the in as, maybe as far west as eastern New York. But then you go out in the coldest air, that 5 to 30 degree below average, even some 40 degrees below average, that runs from about Nebraska, North Dakota, South Dakota, right in between those states, westward all the way to the coast, with the bullseye being in Montana and Wyoming. So it's actually the Europeans much further to the west with this cold air. The way this pattern's been this winter is the models will show colder air for the east only for it to back up to the west. So I think the European computer model and the National Weather Service might have a little bit better handle on this. I'm going to kind of go in between and think it's kind of right in this area is where the core of the cold air will set up the Dakotas out into Montana and Wyoming. But that's uh, again for uh, the, around the 10th through the 13th, around the 13th of February. It'll change in a second here. Here's the temperatures. So you see uh, all of this here. The blue line here is the 32 degree line. So this extends well into the United States, well into the southern U.S. The coldest air, though, the, where the coldest below average temperatures, that's going to be here kind of in the north central United States out into Montana, where you could be seeing temperatures. This uh, purple line here is zero. So sub-zero temperatures, 10 to 20 degrees below, av or, uh, below zero. In areas in Minnesota, it could be even close to 30 degrees below zero. Now, the details are going to, specific details are going to change. We really are just looking at the Arctic blast, the uh, temperature anomalies here. Okay, so this is going towards uh, Saturday the 15th now. And you can see that ridging is still holding strong here in the West Coast. And obviously, that's going to be sending in cold air into the United States. Still a little bit of warmer than average Height anomalies out here in the southeastern United States. Again, ridging out here west. So that's going to keep California very warm uh, with this type of look. You can see the uh, temperature anomalies do extend now a little bit farther to the east. So this cold air is beginning to spill in a little bit. This is something we're going to have to watch. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised to see it move to a little bit to the northwest based off how the models have been behaving. There's been a cold bias in the models as well. Uh, so I would expect it to be a little bit warmer than what these models are showing, but still below average, particularly in this region right here. And that continues through Saturday, and you can see much, really the entire east half of the United States below average, all the way back to Florida. And then when you get to Florida, it starts to warm up a few degrees above average. Meanwhile, the southwestern United States is also above average by a few degrees. The North Central and Midwest, you're talking about 10 to 15 degrees below average. Now, temperature-wise, on the or, uh, anomalies on the uh, European computer model, again, this is departure from average. You can see everywhere except the southeastern United States on the European computer model is below average. Southeast U.S. into the Northeast, you're talking 10 to 15 degrees above average. And then the coldest air is in the north central through the plains in the Rockies, where you can see me seeing temperatures 10 to 25 degrees below average. The west coast about 0 to 5 degrees below average. Temperatures on the GFS here, the actual temperatures, you can see this is the 0 degree line right here in the north central and northeastern United States with the coldest air in Minnesota and North Dakota sub-zero still. Meanwhile, the 32 degree line is extending all the way out into the southeastern United States and then northwestward into the west coast of the United States on the GFS. Uh, one other day we'll look at here is the Sunday, the 16th, a little bit farther in advance. We still got ridging out here, but it's not quite sharp as sharp into Canada. But this ridging out here is something to watch because I think this will continue to build into Canada and send uh, other Arctic outbreaks past the 15th or so. We won't talk about that too much in this video, but I do think it will still stay cold in the north central United States into mid-February. But you can see that pattern. There's troughing now all across the United States, so the cold air should theoretically 
be all across the United States except for the southwest U.S. And you can definitely see that. The northeast, finally a few degrees below average. And uh, the coldest air kind of running from Canada down into the north central United States with 10 to 15 degrees below average there in Nebraska, North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota. Then the European computer model, it's cold all across the country, 5 to 15 degrees below average on average with the coldest air sitting in the central and northern plains where there's 10 to 20 degrees below average. And then obviously Florida and the far southeastern United States, the only place where there's above average temperatures and it's about 15 degrees above average with that ridging. So there is definitely some indications and all models are showing this, ensembles are showing this, the general pattern showing this around the 10th and beyond, probably around the 12th, it, through the, about the 16th or 17th, it's going to be very uh, cool across the United States. The most likely area being Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. That's going to be the most likely area, I believe, for the coldest air to occur within this Arctic outbreak. I would put the odds at a below average temperatures within this re reason, region, excuse me, Around an 80% chance as an average from about the 12th through the 16th. Okay, we're averaging things out. Obviously, things can change day to day, but this is an average for that time period. With the most likely area of uh, near 100% being near in Montana, North Dakota, and parts of South Dakota. Meanwhile, I think there's generally a speaking about a 60% chance at below average temperatures within that line and uh, about a 50% to 60% chance within that line. So I do think the Northeastern United States will at least uh, check in with some below average temperatures, but it, it might only be one or two of the days uh, between the 12th and the, and the 17th or so. And then uh, we'll look at the 16th, the temperatures, and you can see that zero degree line extending farther out east now. And then you can see the Northeastern United States finally getting 10, 20 degrees. And then the Central Plains, 10 to 20 degrees, and the, even parts of the Southern Plains checking in the 20s. And then the far southern United States, still pretty warm in the 50s and 60s in Florida in the 70s. So subscribe below if you like videos like this. Check out my 10-year radar time lapse up there. I made 10 years worth of radar, sped up in two hours. Share this with a video or friend. Comment below how cold has it been in your area. And uh, we'll make some more videos and we'll see you soon.